Hello, my friends, and welcome to MB Shoe Doc, where we take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. We will be covering the art of patina and shine and learn to breathe new life into old shoes. So grab your dyes and polishes and get ready to get your hands dirty, and let's dive right into today's project. Hello my friends, you are about to watch a custom patina, it's a factory defect fix on this pair of George Lion shoes. And it is getting around Christmas time, we are actually going to auction these off and donate to charity. So stay uh, to the end of the video and I'll give details there. Alright, got an interesting project here today. So this is a pair of George Lyon shoes. So my friends over at uh, George Lyon shoes, they had this pair that is a factory defect. Now I'm not sure if this was supposed to be black, but at first they they dyed it the the tan color. Um, but something went wrong here, and they tried to fix it. But you can still see that light tan color underneath and here as well kind of up here at the top there's a number of little areas where there's this tan showing through um, so I don't know if that is just the kind of the base color of the leather and the black didn't uh, didn't you know adhere properly or again if they misdyed the pair um, the light yellow uh, color and then they had to try to redo it and it just didn't really work. So anyway, they sent these to me uh, to see what we could do with them. So I'm going to strip these down and look at giving them a custom patina. Got the laces out, got some snug fitting shoe trees in. Got my stripping gloves on. We have got some acetone. Now I don't know what I'm going to do as far as a patina with these. Honestly, it depends on what I'm able to strip off. So the lighter I'm able to strip these, the more I can do with them. If they don't strip too well, then I'm going to be kind of limited. Well, so far this one strips exceptionally easily. So that black's coming off uh, quite easily. Interesting, interesting. Let's see what happens on this other side. Not as easily. And you will have noticed that this one really didn't have any of those uh, defects that I could see where the, where the light color was showing through. But um, this, this does strip off a little bit easier than most uh, black shoes that I've dealt with. So we should be able to do just about anything we want with these. This is stripping, uh, yeah, quite well. All right, well, I'm not going to film the whole process. You can see how this goes. It's going very smoothly. So we'll get these things completely stripped and then see what we want to do with them afterwards. So this turned out to be... Um, a really interesting project when I stripped these you know just the pattern that it uh, stripped leaving you know some of the black on here really looks kind of neat and so I I could strip it cleaner and probably get all this black off to where it was just yellow um, but really I want to leave some of this on here and work with it I think it's gonna make a very unique uh, patina that I wouldn't really be able to accomplish any other way so you know, kind of looks like a a ripe banana at this point. Uh, very interesting color. So I'm going to use this Angelus Spice. You know, I was kind of debating on what color I wanted to go. It would be really all, uh, easy to do an olive green patina at this point. Um, you could apply some blue. The problem is there's a lot of yellow tones and it might turn it a little bit more of a green tone. You could absolutely do any kind of a green on top of it. Um, if you put red on it, you could probably turn it to red. Um, but the red on the kind of greenish yellow would make it a little bit more brown. So the spice is more of a, 
I guess, a greenish brown color, and I think it'll work well with these. So we're gonna try some of that. The way I'm gonna apply it, I'm not using a cloth right now. I'm gonna use just a little cotton ball here with some dye kind of splashed up on it. So I'm just doing a little bit different method, applying this a little bit more streaky. We'll see how this color works with the uh, existing color. I think my goal in the end is to have more of a tobacco colored patina. So let that sit for a little bit. I think that's a good uh, base coat to start with. And we'll go to another color next. Again, this is uh, uh, such a different coloration here. You know, this is more of an olive green now with that spice. Still has a lot of that uh, kind of mottled undertone, which I think is gonna be really cool. I am now going with some Fibings Walnut, this certainly has some more reddish tones to it, more true brown. And we're going to see how this looks on top of it. I think this will give me more of that tobacco color I wanted, so I want it to be more brown, but maybe maybe with some just hints of green in there. We'll get the other one to match. Uh, we'll let this kind of dry. I may let this sit the rest of the day here. Uh, and then we will rehydrate and just kind of see what the color looks like after. Last thing I'm going to do before I let these sit is I'm going to add just a little bit of dye to the sole edge here. So I'm going to use that same walnut. And I'm just going to go right along the edge here and add a layer onto this. I don't think I'll go with a dark brown. I think I'll probably leave this with some contrast to it. I don't want it quite as light as it was. I may end up doing some custom work on the bottom of the sole. I believe I will. Uh, I'll probably do something with the, the walnut there as well. We'll save that for a little bit later. Alright, so I've let these sit all day and I am anxious to rehydrate the leather and see what it's looking like. Whenever you put a few layers of dye on like this, it kind of dries on the surface and you really can't see the true color until you wipe off the unabsorbed dye. So this is Bic 4. This is my preferred conditioning lotion for patina projects. So you can see already how the, the color looks significantly different after I wipe it off here. Again, there was that whole layer of kind of dry dye on the surface. Yeah, this is looking good. I really like this. Got a lot of color variation in it. One from the, the streaking, the way that I applied it but also because of that um, incomplete strip that we did on purpose. I think shined up, that is gonna look 
Incredible. Very, very cool. So yeah, we'll rehydrate these, let them sit overnight, and then we'll maybe look at shining them up in the morning. I may add a tiny bit of more uh, burnishing on the toes and the heel, but not much. This looks pretty good the way it is. I do want to add just a little bit more of a, a darker toe burnish. I'm going to use a different uh, color dye to do that. So I'm probably going to get some dark brown and apply it there. Toe and heel. And this, this one tongue here kind of dyed a little bit uh, differently, so it needs a little bit more uh, dye as well. So we'll get that done here shortly. Taking a little bit of Angelus Coffee, which is a, a darker brown color. I'm just going to do a little bit of burnishing on the toe with this. color to the sole here as well using the same walnut that I used before just gonna make kind of a street pattern here recondition these one more time again with the big four so I'd added just a little bit of uh, dark brown on the toe and heel just to add a little bit more burnishing so we'll wipe these off again see how they look and I think they are going to be finished finished with the dye work at least Still probably uh, shine them up a little bit more. Yeah, so that worked, I think, perfectly. Darkened up a little bit on the on the toe here, a little bit on the heel. I had just a touch along the uh, top of the eyelets as well. But really happy with the way this uh, color came out here. I think it's looking good. I'm going to start with some mirror gloss, Saphir mirror gloss in neutral. I'm going to apply some of this to the toe and heel primarily. I do like to apply the first in a few layers here just with my fingertips here, kind of able to push the wax into the pores a little bit more this way. This is a good way to build the, the base layer to get a nice mirror shine. I don't like to start with a cloth right away. The cloth tends to pick up um, some wax as it's putting it down. So this is just a, a quicker way to get, get that base layer added and get that mirror shine done. Got a few good layers applied by hand here now. So I will be introducing a cloth next. So get just a little bit of wax on the cloth here. Get a single drop of water. We'll start buffing. This is to smooth out the layers added by hand and to add a little bit more. So after I've got a pretty nice base built up with the mirror gloss, I've moved on to Saphir PDL Pat Deluxe in dark brown. And just getting a little dab 
of wax here. This is really where the, the mirror shine starts to develop. So the mirror gloss, it is, it's a drier, kind of thicker, and it comes out a little bit more clumpy uh, of a wax. And so it's great for building up a quick base, but it doesn't spread as smoothly. And it's a little bit harder to get an actual mirror shine with just the mirror gloss. So again, that is really just to build the base. And you'll be able to see here this PDL. It's got more solvents in it. It's thinner. It's, um, you know, it just glides more smoothly. And so when you put that on top of that base layer of mirror gloss, it kind of melts because of the solvents, the top few layers. And then as you smooth it out, that's really what helps to develop that mirror shine. So you can see the difference here. You know, I wouldn't call it necessarily quite mirrored yet, but it's getting pretty darn close. And so a few layers of this PDL like that, just with a little dab, and you'll get it finished off pretty quick. So I'd say the most time consuming is building those base layers. Once you get that done, this part can be pretty fast. Do a little bit on the heel as well. Don't quite, I don't quite go for a mirror shine on the heel. I do maybe about a third amount as much work on the heel as I do on the toe. So concentrate on the toe. Still put a nice shine on the heel. And still very reflective, but not quite uh, mirror shined, I would say. I think that's looking pretty good there already. Here I've got these completed, shined up, laced up, ready to go. Really quite pleased with the way this pair turned out. Again, if you remember, we went from a defect black to an overripe banana to what we have now, which I'm going to call a tobacco patina with the custom sole as well. So really pleased with how these turned out. Uh, thank you to George Lyon for you know, trusting me with these uh, to do something with them and give us a follow on Instagram George Lyon Shoes and MB Shoe Doc for more details. Hope you enjoyed this. See you on the next one. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the custom patina on these George Lyon Shoes from factory defect to a one-of-a-kind pair. So getting close to Christmas time, uh, George Lyon and, and I, we've decided that we are going to auction these off and donate the proceeds to charity. So again, it's a brand new, one-of-kind custom patina and shine by me. It is a size nine, it tends to be true to size, US size nine. So. Uh, follow us on Instagram, me under MB Shoe Doc, or you can find George Lyon Shoes on Instagram. The details will be there. It's going to be running for two weeks, so you can place your bid. And then the highest bidder at the end of the two weeks, it ends on Christmas Eve. Highest bidder uh, will then pay for the shoes. Well, I'll ship them to you, and then we're going to donate to charity. Uh, we can say that we could donate to a charity of your choice, whoever the winning bidder is. Um, so yeah, check us out on Instagram, get the details there. Um, if you don't use Instagram, you can comment on, uh, below this video and I can keep a running tally of uh, what the bids are there as well. So again, it's a US 9 brand new shoe and just for uh, reference, these typically run about $350 uh, from George Lyon. Alright, happy bidding.